Hey everyone, nice. welcome to the Captain's Masterclass. We are doing networking and crew, actually it's not just captains, it's captain and crew networking event. And uh, we're really, really lucky to have Rob Rademacher with us from Luxury Hospitality Management. He is a mixologist beyond belief and actually recently he's become a TV star. So that <laughs> kind of rocks. <laughs> um, and of course, this is brought to you by um, Luxury Hospitality Management, Soft Interiors and um, number 12 wines, which this is Charlotte. She is my cocktail maker because I'm really good at drinking cocktails, really bad at mixing cocktails. So, um, and as she also has a great knowledge, so for the quizzes and stuff that we do today, I've got a ringer, so I can't win anyways, but you know, she knows everything. So I introduced you, Rob. Everyone, here's Rob, the expert in everything that he does. How are you? Wow, that's a good, uh, a good welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Ria. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing really good and actually looking forward to this session of today. I'm guessing everybody had a long day already with interesting webinars and uh, maybe it's time to cool off a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, get our, um, yeah, uh, it's time to uh, get some fluids into our system. Uh, but before that, um, yeah, quick introduction. My name is Rob, uh, Rob Rademaker in Dutch, in English, Rob Rademaker. Um, Working in hospitality 18 years, roughly, uh, from dishwasher to hotel waiter to bartender. And that's where I really found my passion. I uh, had the pleasure to travel the globe uh, for a large liquor company uh, for seven years and do a lot of training. Then I uh, went back to the hotels and started doing some more uh, bartending management stuff. And that brought me to Luxury Hospitality, which I've been working now for the last three years for as a trainer on bartending, mixology, uh, barista. And uh, believe it or not, hookah, the big, large water pipes, uh, it's um, a very cool topic that people would like to uh, see these days. So both online and on shore, we do training. But for today, it's uh, fun. Remember, if you have any questions, because I see a lot of cool people jumping on this webinar as well, please drop your questions down in the chat. Uh, and Alice will make sure that, um, that we'll get uh, some answers for everybody. I'm going to share a screen in a little bit with our program, which is roughly one and a half hours. Uh, we're going to make two drinks. You can ask questions. I will give you some tips and tricks. And uh, yeah, before that, do we have any questions already, ladies and gentlemen? When can we drink? <laughs> <laughs> when can we drink? Well, first we need to see how our knowledge is, because uh, you said, Ria, that you're actually not capable of making a drink. Well, believe me, Everybody is capable of making a drink, even you, Ria. Um, so that's going to be, uh, I'll just give you a quick introduction in, uh, in the program. It's a little bit of screen sharing, but most of all, I'm going to show you uh, my way of doing uh, specific things. My table here in my house is packed with uh, loads of booze and tools and ingredients. So that's going to be uh, fun, I hope. So let's start with uh, the uh, screen sharing. Uh, to show you our program. Uh, everybody can see this? Yeah, really good. So it's, uh, it says one hour program, but uh, hey, uh, these days we have a lot of time on our hands, so if it takes <laughs> a little bit longer, I'm all good with that. Um, we're going to start off with a welcome, that's what we're doing right now, and then instantly jump into the cocktail quiz. Believe it or not, be but you can win a very, very cool prize uh, which is an 11 set bartending kit. We got three prizes to give away, so pay some attention and uh, maybe you, uh, you will take some home, uh, you'll take home one of the prizes. After the quiz, we're going to talk about the perfect gin and tonic. Everybody's drinking it. Uh, different types of gin, tonic, garnishes, but I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on basically on uh, how to work that uh, according to your own taste and to your guest's taste, which is obviously important. Uh, after that is the espresso martini show off. Uh, you can already think about it. We will be having um, prices as well with that for the person with the best layer of foam. If you feel like joining and making a drink, I hope everybody has prepared um, all the ingredients. All good with that. Everybody has ice, garnishes. If you don't have it, don't worry. The video will be recorded and um, you will get uh, the video and you can still make it at home. Um, after that, Need for Speed, which is a uh, contest. Let's see if we have uh, a time for this, but people are willing to join a speed and efficiency contest, right? But we'll see in, the, in a second how that goes. This is the cocktail set I'm talking about. 
which basically is uh, 11 part cocktail shaker set and you can choose your color there is no pink Ria. i'm sorry <laughs> why would i want uh, pink i prefer black, black and like and, my soul uh, sorry i i would prefer black kind of like my soul really oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well there is a mood for everybody and you can choose your cocktail <laughs> shaker set as well <laughs> all right so alice um are you ready for the answers? Because everybody who is joining this quiz and wants to win the prize, make sure in the chat function that you will uh, that you can type either the number one or the number two. Um, I'm not opening up the chat function, Alice. So if you feel like um, telling me to to stop with the quiz or to answer any questions, please feel free to do so. Can I ask a question <laughs> first? Yes. The question I have is, is it based on who gets the right answer quickest, or is it based on a total of the questions at the end? There are 11 questions. Very good uh, question, uh, by the way. There are 11 questions. The person who has the most questions correct and the fastest gets home the trophy. <laughs> oh, yeah? Is that clear for everybody? That sounds good. Yeah. All right. Let's kick it into gear with question number one. I'm actually going to um, first read, read out the question, then you can answer. And when I start explaining the answer, then there's no time anymore to uh, put in your uh, one or two. So let's start with the first one. Tequila is made from what? Is it made from agave or is it made from cactus? <laughs> you know already, yeah? <laughs> so time is up. Yeah. Let's make sure time was up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, cactus is obviously something that grows in uh, the desert, but you do not make tequila from a cactus. It's actually made from a plant called the agave, and then especially the blue agave, which is part of the desert lily. Uh, it flowers, but before it starts flowering, people uh, chop the plant down and uh, ferment, and then distill eventually into tequila. So the correct answer is uh, agave, number one. Number two, what does the worm in mezcal do? Well, mezcal is the grandfather of tequila, guys. And sometimes you find this worm, also known as a larvae, inside the bottle. What does it do? It absorbs the alcohol and makes you crazy, makes you hallucinate. Or it tells you how strong the alcohol content is. Oh, strong alcohol is. Yeah. And <laughs> rien ne va plus. That's it for the answers for now. Guys, I believe my chat is not functioning. Can anyone help me with that? Oh. Okay. Alice, please help us here. <laughs> Hello. Um, are you able to view the chat at all? Or? I see, I see the messages from everyone coming in at the, mm. at the top, but I don't see mine. Okay, so at the bottom, um, there's, some, there's a bar that says type message here, and you need to click, and then do you see that? The option no, I can see that. No, no. Okay, no. one second. So this she can't see. a lot of time to think about the answer, start opening up Google. <laughs> <laughs> I brought Google with me, Rob. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, one of the attendees wants to write the answers, and she can see messages. So the chat is open, but then typing doesn't seem to work. Okay, I, yeah, I think I have it. Let me see. What you can also do is just instead of uh, typing the. Um, uh, is the this working? It, it's working? Yes, you got it. Yeah, yeah? Okay. okay, but it looks like, yeah. All right. Yeah, Thank all good. you. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, first thing, uh, first, uh, first thing first, if you drink too much alcohol, ladies and gentlemen, you probably start to hallucinate anyway. Um, but the, the worm or the larvae doesn't really make you crazy or whatever. Uh, back in the old days, people didn't have a, um, a way of saying how much alcohol a bottle had. So basically what you did, you went to the shop and you would find a bottle which had a animal of some sort inside, which was still in one piece when it, stopped, when it started to rot. <laughs> Uh, that means that the alcohol percentage was low, uh, and the people, and yeah, and then animal starts uh, rotting in your uh, bottle. So, 
an animal which is in one piece, good sign. Yeah? <laughs> was it any animal? or I mean, I, I can see with the worm, but what kind of other animals did they use? Uh, in China, they actually use snakes, they use lizards, spiders, cobras. Um, so there's a lot of uh, animal okay, stuffed into bottles. And like tequila, would people actually drink those too? Because people still do believe, kind of, that, that you know it gives you like that extra high. Would they drink the scorpions and stuff too? Uh, sorry about scorpions, I didn't understand you, sorry. Well, if, whatever they had, whatever animal, the spiders or whatever they had in the bottle, would people drink those as well? Absolutely, and they chew on it for ages. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So obviously this is not seven-star luxury service to serve animals inside drinks, but uh, hey, back in the old days, um, it was part of uh, telling how much alcohol a liquid had. Jumping on to the next one, new question. What ingredients go into a Cosmopolitan, a drink very famous because of a hit series, Sex in the City? Uh, you might know that one. Um, Few ingredients, vodka, pomegranate, triple sec, lime cordial, or number two, vodka, triple sec, lime, and cranberry. This should be an easy one, so stop putting in your answers. It's obviously number two. If we look to number one, there is no sour components in there. Usually pomegranate juice is also kind of sweetened. If you use only fresh pomegranate juice, then you have a sour component in a drink creating balance. But in this case, in this lineup, um, vodka, triple sec, lime, and cranberry is the way to go. Next one. The favorite cocktail of Kim Kardashian. We all serve the rich and famous, uh, but what do they drink? So let's stick with Kim Kardashian, white Russian or black Russian. That's it, no more answers possible anymore. Alice, are you keeping on track? Yes. Very good, going, going fast, right? <laughs> Uh, the correct answer is the white Russian. The white Russian. But hey, what goes one, into the white Russian? Just give me one second. Oh, oh yeah, let me go back. How many people do we have, by the way, uh, on the chat now? We have 28. We have 28 people. Very nice. Hello, everybody. Alrighty. Hi everyone. Okay, now you can go to the next one. Sorry, yes. Uh, so it's a white Russian. A white Russian is a drink also made famous by the dude. Um, and he was drinking a drink with cream, coffee, liqueur, and vodka. Number two. Alrighty. Alice, just let me know when I'm ready to move on to the next one. What is the difference between a vodka paralyzer and a white Russian? Is it just Coke, right? You're saying very funny things. Paralyzed <laughs> Coke. I don't know what you mean, but... Um... <laughs> a vodka paralyzer. <laughs> you... Okay. Uh, a vodka cola. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just do one thing? Um, every time we ch change questions, I'm going to write um, into the chat next so that I know that <laughs> the next one has happened. Okay. Yeah. So continue. Um, Ria, let's get to back to, the, to that back later. I just want to carry on because we got another six questions to go. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, absinthe, the, ingre the ingredient that Vincent van Gogh cut his ear off. And uh, Ernest Hemingway made a drink with equal parts of absinthe and champagne, calling it death in the afternoon, uh, made with absinthe. Uh, two important ingredients, either one licorice or wormwood. And the answer is wormwood. Wormwood is a very bitter uh, botanical, which uh, doesn't make you hallucinate or whatever. It's a very uh, beautiful <laughs> ingredient. And uh, so don't be afraid that you will see green fairies of absinthe. Hang on. Everyone got number one on that one. Gemma wrote two, but he wrote one initially. Everybody got number one? <laughs> well, it's, it's in there, a licorice. We but were it's not right. The most one. <laughs> we were right, but we don't count, right? So that's just rude. <laughs> Are we ready for the next one? Or am I going too fast? Uh, Maria, you are uh, muted. Sorry. Yeah, I'm ready for the next question. Yeah, perfect. So gin martini, or any martini for that matter, how long do you stir this drink? 
8 to 10 seconds or 13 to 17 seconds? 8 to 10, 13 to 17. Well, the answer is number two, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Number two. You were right. Very good. <laughs> Uh, why is that? Because when you stir a drink, the amount of water that is released from the ice is a lot, uh, the, the process is a lot slower. So you shake shorter because you release a lot of energy and water is super important in mixed drinks. Uh, so you shake roughly 8 to 10 seconds, but you need to stir longer to get the same amount of water in your drink to make everything pal pal palatable and in harmony. So number two is the correct answer. Did you know this, Ria? I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to the next one. A martini, uh, James Bond especially, uh, talks about a dry martini. So what the hell is a dry martini? It's a drink which contains either gin or vodka and vermouth, and then usually dry vermouth. But what makes the martini drier? Number one, do we add more dry vermouth to make it drier, or do we add less dry vermouth to make the drink drier? And the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is actually less dry vermouth make the drinks drier. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> it's pretty funny though, because um, to make a drink dry, uh, the, the, in the cocktail world, it basically refers to less sugar, less sugar, less sugar, less sugar. So the less sugar something has, the drier it is, right? Just like triple sec Cointreau is three times dry or three times concentrated in oils, but the sec goes for, for the dry. Same goes for the amount of sugar into the um, martini. So less dry vermouth is the drier the cocktail. You want a bone dry martini, you just put a little drop in there and that's it. All right, next question. We are at number nine. We are going to 11, so three more. Um, cachaça. Cachaça is a Brazilian rum made from sugarcane juice directly mm. and is uh, actually uh, one of the world's best-selling uh, spirits just, just because of one of these cocktails. Is it the caipirinha or is it the caipiroshka that you make with cachaça? I think most of you have this uh, as a correct answer as caipiroshka sounds Russian, obviously, and then you need to make it with vodka and uh, the original a uh, Brazilian drink is the caipirinha, which is rum lime sugars or cachaça lime sugars. Also, when you teach this to your crew or just to your family or your guests at home, this drink is an awesome drink to uh, be creative with because you get your base ingredient, which is the booze. You can just sour in your sweet component. You can just add fruits in here. You can add spices. You can make it longer by topping up with a nice ginger beer or whatever, it's a very cool foundation to, to create new drinks with. So, um, correct answer is number two. If I'm going to pause, let me know, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm moving on to the next one. So, for the whiskey lovers uh, and most guests after dinner, especially in a luxury setting, they ask you for a specific whiskey. But what whiskey, in general, uh, gives you a smoky flavor? Is that scotch whiskey or bourbon whiskey? It actually is Scottish whiskey. So number one gives you smoky flavors. Ria had that one uh, <laughs> answered correctly, I see. Uh, yes, um, when you make scotch, in the process of making scotch, there is a step that they have to dry the grains before they can eventually make beer from it. And then when you distill beer, you get whiskey. And then you, uh, sorry, you need to age it first in barrels and then get whiskey. whiskey. But in scotch, they, uh, they smoke the hell out of the grain, usually and hands the uh, smoky flavor in the whiskey. With bourbon, they do not. Cool. Last but not least question. Um, the movie cocktail, Tom Cruise. In what year did, uh, was the movie released? Was the movie published? Was that in 88 or 92? Yeah, it's in. It's in 1988, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and why do I put this question in here? Because uh, bartending at that time uh, became a profession that you would do while you were studying, just to earn some, some, some quick bucks, to get your food, to pay your rent, uh, and that's it. 
But from this moment on, the world of bartending, uh, believe it or not, because of a movie, uh, started up a whole new era of people starting to flare bartends or throwing with the bottles, but also serious cocktail nerdiness after this uh, of fresh ingredients. Uh, the whole part, the whole uh, idea about mixology, making drinks better, making drinks themed and specific to the requirements of our guests. Uh, from this moment on, it got uh, the kickstart. It also uh, made cocktail making sexy, just had help. to say. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Alice, do we have a winner already? It looks like it. we do. We have, um, the winner is actually Gemma. Congratulations! <laughs> um, in second place, we have Bex. Bex, well done, Bex. Ian. Uh, if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. All right. Well, there can only be one winner. Do I pronounce the name right? Chema? Chema, yeah. Chema, yeah. Could you tell us in the chat which color shaker set, set, set you would like? I can unmute you, you Chema. Now, now you can hear me. I go forward for the black one. Good job. Like well, my soul. <laughs> yeah, like your soul. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is important, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, when you win a prize, make sure to uh, have a contact with Alice that she can write down your. Uh, um, um, sure, I will get contact with Alice. Yeah, so we can send it to the to the proper adre address. So more prizes to win, but it's time, um, enough with the chit-chats, I think it's time to have a little bit of um, a very tasty drink. Yeah, Ria goes, thumbs up. Okay, so let me stop sharing this screen, because we're going to jump into the gin and tonic, but I'm not going to share you the recipe yet, so stop sharing. We're back again. Can you all see me? Uh, either probably very small or very large. This is, uh, you can just... Alice, how does it work in our settings that people can see me a little bit better or larger? Because I'm going to show uh, some fruit cutting and, and talk about the gin, the tonic. Um, I believe we should all um, see Rob in yeah. the large screen anyway. If anyone doesn't, you just have to click in the top right. There's a little button that says view and you can change the view type. But if you can see him across the full screen, that's fine. And you should see everyone else along with us. Grande. Okay, um, gin and tonic. If you have questions, pop them in the, uh, in the uh, chat function, please. Gin and tonic. I'm having a classic gin here. Can we all see that? There you go. Gin and tonic. Um, who wants to earn a bonus point, by the way, by telling me where the drink comes from or originally? Just make sure you're not into mute mode. And you can just share it in the in our group call here. Anybody knows where the gin and tonic comes from? Where was it originated? I can see PTW of the India. India, very good. That's the answer. I have no price yet, but uh, keep up the good work and uh, maybe we can work something out. Um, India, well, it was actually the British Army who went to India. They had to fight there, but half or more than half of the, the, the soldiers were actually getting malaria stings. They would get a high fever, and uh, they were no u no use anymore for the army. So what they did in the army, people were drinking a drink which contained quinine, and quinine it's found in a bark uh, of a tree called the cinchona tree, and you grind the bark up to a powder, um, and you put some water with it, some sugar. You drink this, and it's against malaria, and it's also it lowers the fever. Um, this is called the fever tree. It's also a nickname of this tree, which uh, uh, contains quinine. But the soldiers also got paid in a daily ration of gin. So it's very easy. When the sun went down and the mosquitoes became alive, people had some gin and some health tonic back in the old days, <laughs> uh, as they called it. So the gin and tonic was born. Also for vitamins, they used citrus in whatever form, whatever. And then uh, they had their health drink, which we drink today. Not one when the sun goes down usually, but most of you can drink a little bit more of that, I guess, right? So the gin and tonic, perfect way of doing this. There is no perfect way. Um, why, when we have guests, when we are serving on guests on board or on shore, 
uh, every guest has a, spe a, a personal uh, favor, right, in drinks. This is a classic gin, meaning it's herbal. Then you also have floral gins that are a little bit softer and obviously flor uh, floral in flavor, flowery in flavor. You got fruity gins, uh, you got spicy gins. So when you're stocking gin on board, make sure that you select at least four or five different gins that um, um, uh, that have a different flavor profile. So when a guest orders a gin and tonic, you can ask them, would you like it fruity, spicy, floral, or herbal? Uh, so that's question number one. Question number two, uh, single or double measure, because some people like their, to have their gin and tonic super strong. Um, then the type of tonic that you use, ladies and gentlemen, this is a brand that I like a lot. Obviously, there are, are a lot more like these, but there are even uh, more bigger multinational brands like like <coughs> Schweppes, things like this. Schweppes, they have a premium line, which is really good, but the, 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 um, the mainstream stuff is just horrible. It messes up your whole gin and tonic. Uh, why? Because of the chemical sugars in there mm -hmm. and the amount of flavorings that is put into that tonic, it overpowers the gin, right? If you would serve all five different gins to the guest and just pour the tonic over it, you wouldn't taste any difference because the damn tonic is overpowering the whole drink. So step number one, choose a variety of gin. Step number two, choose a quality tonic with natural ingredients and a very fine champagne-like mouthfeel carbonation because the carbonation also makes sure that you keep the spirit alive literally inside the drink. So a uh, key thing on your ingredients. Let me move on to making the drinks, and this is where everybody can follow me as well. Ria, are you ready? I am so through? ready. I've been. This is why I came tonight, <laughs> really. All right. So for step uh, number one is your glass. I'm using a balloon glass. Um, the cool thing is with a uh, green screen behind me is that you can uh, work some magic as well for the viewers, because first I have a glass right now, and then it's gone. <laughs> and then it's back then, and then it's gone. Okay, so I have to work in front of me so you can see what I'm doing. Um, ice step number or not i have my large sh shaker right here and i'm not going to use my hands obviously for the ice so we want to fill the glass how how much ice should we put into the glass that is a tricky question with this many people <laughs> so i will tell you if i'm just using one or two ice cubes they need to chill down the whole drink meaning in a very short period of time they lose so much energy to keep the drink cool um, so that means with less ice, you will get loads of water in a short time, resulting in more water in your drink while you're drinking it. So the more ice you use, the colder the drink stays, the less the ice melts, and the better quality gin and tonic you have. So load that puppy up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'll just have tonic. <laughs> Who's laughing here? <laughs> I think Ria just wants the gin, and I'm going to yeah. stick with the tonic. <laughs> <laughs> why, why ruin a good gin, really? Right, well, uh, it's, oh, some people, they like gin just on the rock. Some people like a splash of tonic. Um, I'm going to wait with the tonic first, but check with the guests, single or double measure. Uh, for me, a single measure for the UK, let's say that, is 25 ml. Uh, which is almost one fluid ounce. Um, I'm sticking between 40 and 50 milliliters, right? So get your jigger. Everybody has a jigger. If you do not have a jigger, use a small shot glass or just freehand it, whatever you want. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with my measure. 40 milliliters, get that over the ice. <laughs> uh, next step will be tonic. But in this case, I would like to wait with my tonic and put my garnish in first. Because when I'm going to pour the tonic over the garnish, it flushes down all the nice aromas and blends it into the drink, making the drink a lot more interesting. So what I'm, I'm going to do, put this away, I'm going to cut a uh, grapefruit. Um, you might have lemon or orange or whatever. You can do a few things. This fruit inside the peel it contains a lot of oil, right? So if I'm just going to collect the peel with my knife, just like so, you can squeeze the peels, which are in the outer part of the peel, inside the glass, giving a little oily layer, but it smells amazing. So if you want to really uplift the guest experience, 
get that glass, have that uh, zest available, and just spray it into the glass just like so. And um, it smells amazing. And um, one of the key things of a successful drink is aroma. So we already nailed the aroma part here. I'm just going to drop the peel in there. But what I'm also going to do, I'm also going to add some of the uh, fruit juice itself. So I'm going to cut a wedge or a little piece of the uh, grapefruit. I'm using a red grapefruit uh, because the tonic is pretty bitter by itself. If you're using white grapefruit, then it's going to be a bitter bomb inside your mouth. And uh, I don't think um, maybe you like it, but in general, people do not like to have that much bitter flavors in there. I'm just going to cut a wedge a wedgie, which is uh, shaped like a little piece of uh, pizza, basically. <laughs> and then when you hold that above the glass, just like so, you can just squeeze it in there. Make sure that when you do this in front of the guests, you have your hands in front of it. Otherwise, they get it in their eyes, and uh, <laughs> they will not be laughing at you. <laughs> I can tell you that. So the juice is in there, makes it nice and pink, pumps up the freshness of the drink. Uh, one more wedge for the garnish. Just put it in there on the side. And now I'm going to flush down all those oils and all those aromatics by using the tonic. I just showed you the, showed you the classic whoops, classic Indian tonic. But I'm because we're in the meds, uh, we're using Mediterranean tonic, which is infused with rosemary, uh, basil, and a lemon thyme, which is obviously a, um, a hybrid of regular thyme. But it's uh, super tasty and complements the gin well. So please go ahead. Let me get my opener, in this case, a cocktail shaker, just like so. When you pour it in, I see some people pouring in already. When you pour, treat it like champagne, right? Because the texture inside your tonic uh, <laughs> gives you that mouthfeel. If I just ram the whole tonic in there, we lose the bubble, we lose the, the mouthfeel, and the, yeah, the gin and tonic becomes from a 10 to a 6, right? So <laughs> gently pour the tonic on top. And now we're making the drink for ourselves, but always check with your guests how much tonic they want in the drink. Some people want to splash, <laughs> some people want to have two bottles in there. So I'm making the drink for myself now because it's getting late and it's getting, I'm getting thirsty. Uh, in general, alcohol is lighter <laughs> than water, right? Alcohol is lighter than sugar. This tonic also has some sugar. So when I pour the tonic in, it automatically mixes with the alcohol, in this case the gin. So you don't really need to stir, but we're using um, fresh ingredients like juices. So I'm going to gently stir the gin and, and tonic oh, just very slowly. Uh, so everything mixes and we can, can say uh, salut. 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 Tema, I see you modeling uh, something in there as well, or what, what did you do? Well, I didn't have ice, so I have kind of a really sad gin tonic, but I mean, it's going to be good. Good. <laughs> How you like it? Any other re requests uh, who use the specific uh, gin that would, they would like to share with, uh, with us? I like the one of Jonathan. <laughs> we, used, we used Bulldog London Dry Gin. Nice. Nice. Tankeray. Tankeray, yes. I used the same. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Ale? Where is it? There's, where is my phone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan? Here, you can have a sip oh, yeah. of mine. There you go. Just, just stand it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rob, now that we have a moment, just a second, I would like to tell that as I get the prize and I am part of the organization team, we should give it to the second winner. So uh, just me. check it, Alex. <laughs> yeah, it's not part of the organization because then I keep it for me. So <laughs> in that case, I would like to say to you, say that Bex is also part of the organization of Luxury Hospitality. <laughs> and I want to thank you as well, soft uh, interior for everything. And I'm to add wine. Please, please do share. So just just give us the details on the on the price. Um, and who gets it, obviously. Um, any questions till now, ladies and gentlemen? Because we had the easy part, and I told you about the perfect gin and tonic. Well, there is no such thing as a perfect gin and tonic, because every guest has different needs. But if you follow the basic rules of cool, correct glassware, enough ice, 
uh, and quality ingredients and fresh ingredients, you can't go wrong. Alice will let you know. Yes, very good. Okay, if there is no um, other questions. Actually, Rob, I just wanted to know something about gin. I, I heard, well, it's, it's sort of a myth, but they used to call gin mother's ruin. Oh, yes. Why is that? Yes. Well, let me share a, a nice story with that. Uh, gin actually comes from a local drink uh, which was produced in Holland and Belgium back in the old days, uh, which is called uh, Jenever. Or Jenever. Uh, and Jenever, uh, if you pronounce that in English, it's, it's called Geneva. Uh, and the English actually adopted this Dutch spirit uh, during the 30 years of war. Uh, and where the English were fighting together with the Dutch soldiers and they saw these crazy Dutch people going into battle all the time uh, and they were like, damn, where they get this courage from? It's, it's unbelievable with you guys. So what happened is uh, that they had a lot of gin or Geneva before they started battling, drank themselves some Dutch courage and then uh, went into battle. So the English took it back to England and uh, created Mother's Ruin. And what does that mean is that they actually tried to recreate this Dutch Geneva, Geneva, what the hell is Geneva? Well, everything is short in England, so Geneva went to gin. And uh, everybody after a while was making and producing gin in England. No rules at all, right? It was cheaper than beer. It's insane. And it was healthier than water. Uh, why? Because water could be uh, contaminated really fast. Um, so when you were drinking something of high alcohol, no bacteria, so it's safe. Uh, actually, people would drink two pints of gin per day per person. Uh, back in the old days, which mm -hmm. is from young little kids to old folks. Kids and one as well. in London was making this horrible English style gin, um, which became uh, known as the gin epidemic or also mother's ruin because uh, people were drinking so much that they were actually falling into a coma on, on the streets. And then the government, they walked by with these wheelbarrows. Uh, collected the people who were sleeping there for days and they couldn't wake up anymore uh, and they buried them alive literally oh that's uh, awful i was laughing until you said that that's awful yeah. yes yes bad times bad times uh, so is actually, gin is actually responsible for the, the saying dutch courage and mother's ruin Both. absolutely yeah. yeah 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 but the cool thing is um well the cool thing it was actually pretty uh bad story is that they would bury these people alive and when they were recycling the coffins then when they open up the coffin they would see inside all these scratch marks oh. of people literally waking up again and uh, they were like damn we need to you know we need to <laughs> fix this problem uh, so what they did uh, they created a system which uh, it was a small pipe from above the ground to the coffin um, with a little wire connected to the toe of people who were laying in these coffins and when they would wake up they would scream and go like this and the cord was connected to a little bell yeah. and the person on graveyard shift would be waiting there to be saved by the bell and that's where the expression comes from as well gin is responsible for a lot really yes yes <laughs> still is today <laughs> yeah. cheers to that, cheers to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is everybody enjoying the gin and tonic Yes, mm -hmm. very good. I'm drinking a gin, but it's good. good. Just gin. <laughs> no, I've got to, I'm kidding. Well, just gin, people drink that as well, especially with ice. Um, I think it's time to move on to the next drink. Yeah? What I'll do first is I'll first walk you through how we make a drink. And I'm going to explain that uh, in a nutshell, basically, but just to, to tell you the, the key elements of making this drink. And then we'll make the drink together. How does that sound? Yeah? Good. Well, espresso martini <laughs> is made in a martini glass. And this is a coupe glass, which is also suitable. If you do not have one of these glasses, a cognac glass works fine, or even uh, a glass like this. Mm -hmm. But to honor the name martini, um, it's a style of drink. Okay? It has nothing to do with the brand martini that we know, right? The martini cocktail was there before the company Martini start producing vermouth. Uh, so it has nothing to do with that. It really refers to the type of glass that you're using. So martini glass, step number one. Then the espresso martini what, that we're going to make was created in the late uh, 19, sorry, uh, yeah, late 1990s. 
and um, by bartender Dick Bradstall in London. And a photo model, she was finished with work. She had a super long day. She came into the bar. She said, bartender, can you make me something that wakes me up and messes me up? And he was like, all righty. Well, what did he wanted to do? Well, vodka was really popular back then. So I'm using, in this case, uh, Smirnoff. That was to mess her up. Uh, to wake her up is some fresh espresso. Make sure that when you make this at home on your uh, espresso machine or whatever, you really get the freshest and the strongest extraction uh, because uh, you want to have a nice layer of foam. Preferably, you use a real good coffee machine with, with fresh grinded coffee beans. But that's number one. But vodka espresso is nice, but we need to have balance because now the drink is just bitter. So to create balance and to create some synergy inside this drink, he, create, he used coffee liqueur. Kahlua works really good or Tia Maria works really good. I'm using Café Marrakesh, which is an Arabic-style coffee liqueur, which is a little bit more powerful, has a, a little bit more strength, and makes the drink a little, a little bit more complex. Uh, but you can use any coffee liqueur that you like. This one is also infused with some vanilla, meaning we get another dimension in the drink, uh, and then with a very nice vanilla finish. If you do not have vodka, use rum or cognac. If you don't have this, use hazelnut liqueur, like Frangelico or... Uh, um, chocolate liqueur, right? It, the, these classic drinks are really there to be um, yeah, twisted or to make it into your own specific flavor as long as you follow the rules of balance in drinks and synergy that ingredients really complement each other. Thank you. Cool. That's for the ingredients part. Um, I don't drink my, my uh, coffee with sugar, but if you drink your coffee with sugar, I mm -hmm. highly suggest that you add a touch of sugar syrup in there. The so if you don't drink any sugar in your coffee, don't use it. Just stick with the sweetness of the liqueur. Otherwise, add a touch of sugar syrup. This I made myself, and you can make it yourself as well. It's two cups sugar, one cup hot water. Stir it around, and Bob's your uncle, right? Then you got the um, sugar syrup. Then with shaking, quick tips. I'm using a two-part shaker, which is these two parts, which goes... It seals like so, give it a good whack, then you shake it. Um, after shaking, we need strainers. I'm using these two strainers. Yeah, the big one with the spiral, it always goes into the shaker like so. And the fine strainer, or the tea sieve, however you would like to call it, we use that to get small chunks of ice out of there and to create this super cool micro foam on top of the drink which stays really, really long and gives a very nice texture as well to the drink and looks, how Ria would like to call it, damn sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you have too much of an insight into me now, Rob. We've got to stop talking to each other. We know each other a little bit longer than today. So, uh, um, that's basically it. If you do not have this two-piece shaker, you can use the three-part shaker, uh, which has three parts, obviously. Make sure when you seal it, this is the cap. If you don't have a jigger, by the way, or a measuring cup, you can use this as well as a measuring cup. Make sure everything is closed, and when you start shaking, that you have connection with all three parts. I'm not wearing white today for a reason, right? Oh Espresso <laughs> martini, when it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it goes over yourself, then uh, it's not nice. So make sure when you shake it, you hold three parts. Whoops, hold three parts, and one hand at the bottom. You shake it like that. <laughs> all righty. Can everybody, is everybody ready with the shaker? Mm -hmm. All the ingredients there as well? Yeah? We're good. Let's start by shaking things up. Glass. Okay? So the glass that we have that you're going to serve the drink in, it's a straight up drink, but you need the glass as cold as possible because there's no ice in the glass. That's why we need to add some ice in there first. So please go ahead. There you go. Some people like to add a splash of water as well. Because if you add some water to the ice, the surface area that the liquid is touching is yeah, obviously it gets cold a lot faster. But when you have the time, just chuck it in there and leave that on the side. Next step is the cocktail shaker. I'm starting with the largest part of the shaker to put everything in there. And we first want to have ingredients. And in the end, we want to have ice. If I start with ice first, and it takes long, it's just melting and melting and melting, and uh, 
the whole flavor of the drink goes down the drain literally. Um, so add your ice last to minimize your dilution or to control it. So first of all, espresso. Rob, there you go. I have a quick question. I'm sorry. If you're uh, making more than one drink, can you do it at the same time or do you have to do it separately? You can make, uh, well, there is something that we call the calling order. This is what we train uh, everybody as well on. There's a specific way of creating drinks. Uh, the fastest is the best, obviously, but when I make two espresso martinis, I cannot fit that in one shaker. You need two shakers and okay. shake with two hands at the same time. What you can also do is when you have an old-fashioned drink that's a stirred cocktail and you have a shaken cocktail, that's when you start shaking with one hand and the other hand you stir right so it's it's multitasking but yes you can you do uh, make cocktails uh, as much as possible at the same time as long as you stick with the basic rules of mixology right but you yeah. have to have two shakers then to make two drinks you can't do two in one yes correct okay. yeah and if you're an octopus you can use uh, eight i guess right <laughs> <laughs> cool um espressos in there then the vodka 40 milliliters Four zero. Just get it in there. There you go. In the meanwhile, the glass is getting nice and cold. Uh, remember, we are now in, in a fun workshop together with us, but when we're serving our guests, especially with trolley service, so we prepare the trolley in the pantry, we display all the ingredients very nice, and we create the cocktail in front of the guests live. Always make sure that when you pour, you have the label facing the guest. It's just like wine, right? Bartending is like uh, cooking in the kitchen, it's like serving wine, it's like uh, serving the perfect cup of tea. Make sure the labels always face the guest. So that is in there. Then I'm going to add my coffee liqueur, 25 milliliters. And this is going to act as our sweetening agent. There you go. Get it all in there to the last <laughs> drop. Sweet. Is everybody still with me? Yeah. Is it very nice? So that is in there. What you can do, I'm using the, the spoon. Let's give it a quick stir. Just put a little drop on your hand so we can taste how the balance is, the bitter and the sweetness. We want this to be equal, right? In this case, it's fine. For me, it's almost towards the sweet side. So this is something you need to, you need to figure out. What do your guests like? What, what, do, you, what do you like? Um, so that's the cool thing about creating cocktails is just three ingredients this drink but you can go uh, wrong very very easily on that as well so that is in there who is adding a little bit of sugar just put your hand up yeah nice originally the recipe calls for a dash of sugar correct but some people they like it a little bit less sweet all right let me see did we have everything this is there let's work clean as we go I'm sitting on my di dining table, so I can't wash my shaker, but originally, uh, or sorry, normally, when you would create a drink, instant, clean as you go, put it back where you found it, so when you have a new order, you're ready to rock again. Cool. Ice. Next step. This ice from the glass, I'm going to uh, throw back into the um, ice bucket as it's still clean, and we can reuse that. The glass is nice and chilled, nice and cold. Then add your shaker. You know by now, more ice is less water. So we're going, going to fill the large part of the shaker at least three quarters full. So go ahead. One thing I didn't um, explain to you yet, but let's first put the ice in there. All the way to the top. And the people who are actually on a video off mode as we speak, this is going to be a, a contest. The person with the best layer of foam will receive a cocktail picking set. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you'll have enough eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I see different types of eyes. Seema, you have uh, the white ice tea, I see. Which is which is okay as long as you have enough. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm trying to create ice, but I mean, it's pretty much water. 
Okay. <laughs> but what's the key in this uh, in this drink? Otherwise, it doesn't taste good. What, while I'm talking, ice uh, is releasing the water, which we call obviously diluting the drink, which is good. Too much, not good. When we start shaking this drink, guys, make sure to uh, close it, but in an angle, so you have a straight line on one side of the shaker, because eventually you need to tap the top of the shaker open to open the shaker up. But let's shake it all now for 10 seconds, really hard. Everybody ready? Set, go. And when you shake, always forget, uh, don't forget <laughs> that people are looking at you. <laughs> so remember, to smile a little bit. Very good. Eight seconds. Nine seconds. A little bit harder. A little bit stronger. And there we go. Now it's key. Top the top of the shaker. Open it up. Get your strainer or two and get it into your glass as possible. Just like so. That's looking good. Oops. Not much fun. I'm using the two strainers. So we get all the small chunks of ice out of there. Yeah, this ice is always really good. Et voilà. Voilà. Et so who is having problems in opening up the shaker? Beast bubble. Everybody's off. Oh, Gary is already into the drink. <laughs> <laughs> We still have a garnish, yeah. and the garnish that we're having in this case is espresso beans. You can use whatever you like. You can again use the orange. Oh, by the way, do you see my layer? Do you see the layer of Do we have similar to folk, gentlemen? Everything is looking really good, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm using coffee beans in this case, but you can use uh, grated chocolate. You can use some nutmeg. Um, you can use. Uh, whatever you like some people and this is really advisable if you look to the top of the drink i don't think i can really show you that but every yacht has their own logo right and it's very easy to print out this logo cut the logo out of um the paper and put it on some hardboard put it on top of the drink and then when you dust a little bit of cinnamon or cacao over the drink and you take it off, you got the logo of the actual yacht uh, inside the drink as well, which is very easy fix, um, very fast, uh, and it looks uh, amazing. So, uh, but for now, three espresso beans. Always, right, when you put the garnish on top of the drink, this is the cherry on the ice cream. Make sure they look tasty don't some, some drinks they look like when people put it in garden it looks like they don't care they don't have enough time but this is what makes the drink the drink so three coffee beans why three coffee beans why three coffee beans yeah tell you coffee bean number one is for health the important in corona times <laughs> Coffee bean number two is for wealth, right? And the last one is also super important, which is happiness. So health, wealth, and happiness. That's why we do three. For some people, it's a Ferrari, a yacht, a villa, but let's stick with that. Cheers. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and then hold it as close as possible to the screen because you want to see the layer of foam. Very good, very good. Who's the proudest and loudest? It looks like Maria Water has it. Maria Water, yeah. <laughs> right? It, it's Maria Koch. It's Maria Koch from Water Without Waste. <laughs> That's really good, Rob. Really good. Yum. Yeah, you like it? I think I found my new favorite drink because it not only gives you that buzz that you need to get going, but it also it. relaxes mm -hmm. you at the same time. It's a little bit different, I hope, than your morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a perfect drink in Spain. I think, well, you know, the six o'clock yeah, Calahios are gone. Yeah. It's now coffee yeah. espresso. If you yeah. shot the printer, you And um, the key thing is, especially when you're serving multiple guests in an in a after dinner or uh, maybe even during lunch, 
What is really hard with the strings is to get them look exactly the same because of the foam which is on there. So um, I would suggest that when your staff or yourself is serving these drinks, let's say three or four, that you put down all the glasses and then the contents that you have from each shaker. So let's say you have one cocktail in a shaker, you'll be dividing one cocktail to four glasses. Another one cocktail to four glasses because then you create equality among the uh, foam makers. So that's really important with, with the drink. Um, questions? Um, would you would you also do the coffee cold or you always put a hot coffee in it? Preferably cold. Obviously, when we're doing a hot espresso, then it's going to be more watery, um, watery flavor. Uh, we're adding a lot of water, which is 30 milliliters of espresso, anyways, and yeah, espresso. Yeah. So preferably cold. But if there's no time, some people do get away with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Everybody's enjoying this? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, the layer of foam actually stays on here at least 25, 30 minutes. So it doesn't break down, uh, which is yeah. very nice. If you're using fresh coffee, obviously. Yeah. Does, it, does it normally take somebody 25 to 30 minutes to, to drink it? Uh, some people actually take uh, one hour, uh, but that's more in like a commercial restaurant setting that they just want to be cheap <laughs> and take one hour to, to finish a drink or maybe people really like to enjoy the drink slow. But I, I would imagine that it wouldn't taste so good warm, right? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that please? I imagine it wouldn't taste so good warm, like it's supposed to be cold. Correct. When yeah. something is cold, the molecular structure becomes very tight and close. When you serve a drink, and uh, there is a guy called, um, I forgot his name, but uh, oh, oh, David Augustus Embry, he wrote a book called The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. And he said the best way to drink a cocktail is as fast as possible while it's still smiling at you. <laughs> so Which he's my kind of friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Rob. Uh, yeah, thank Everyone. you. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, are there that we are drinking right now, everybody? I would love to know feedback of Gary Trailer and Marja, and uh, I think I have Carlota there as well. They will, they are, they are well, uh, really looking forward to have uh, this cocktail masterclass. Ah, good. I don't know if they are here now because I, I mean, Gary just put off the camera. I think Carolina is there. I Carlota is there, but without camera too. Carlota, pon el audio aunque sea. Hola, estoy aquí. I'm here, I'm here. Hello, Carlota, how are you doing? I think you're from in Alicante, right? Yes, that's it. I'm from Benito. That's cool. How are I you? Wanted, I, I wanted to do the cocktail, but I didn't have the ice. I forget it. No, it's why I, I didn't do it. No worries, no worries. I mean, I didn't have eyes neither. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I left, I left. Well, the, the important thing is that you have fun. That's the important thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's true. Carlota, if you do not have eyes, what you do is for next time, if you just want to make it for yourself, if you don't have, don't worry, what you can do is just grab a, a large bottle Make two or three espresso martinis in there. Pour some mineral water in it for the right dilution, the right water, and put it in the free uh, in the fridge. And when you feel like uh, finishing uh, one, two, or three drinks, just open up the fridge and it's uh, ready to go. Okay, okay. Yes, I have it. I have it now in the fridge. Good. 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 That's great. And Gary? Yeah, it's been great. Um, I'm not normally a drinker, but I think I've. Um, Finished both glasses, so I should wow. practice a bit I thought more. that was going to be me. I didn't think it was going to be somebody else. You beat me. And thanks for the, uh, the, the the bag of goodies as well. It's much appreciated. And uh, this will not go to waste. It will be um, highly used on the boat when I get back. <laughs> That's perfect. We will have to thank to the, the partners we have. Uh, yes. Superior, number 12 wines, uh, Rob. And everybody. Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers.
Cheers. Well, cheers, everybody. Um, yeah, do we have anything to add, Ria or Alice? No, for me, I'm, you know, this has been great. And I was mentioning this morning when I did the welcoming uh, speech that the one thing that is absolutely amazing about yacht shows is the networking and getting together with people and chatting and having a few drinks. And yacht shows are well known for the many parties that they have and over the top parties, really. And then everybody shows up the next morning looking very worse for the wear. Um, <laughs> Um, and, you know, that was that is the one thing I think about the virtual sort of aspect of things that is hard to yeah. re replace. But I think this kind of concept is great. And I've had a great time and I've got to see many people there. I've learned a new concept. Um, I've been able to have some fun with Charlotte. Um, so, yeah, it, it's been phenomenal. It's great that everybody sort of came on board and, and we learned something new. And I'm going to finish these before tonight because... <laughs> I have to be here first thing in the morning tomorrow morning, so rightfully so, I should show up looking a little worse for the wear. <laughs> in good. the spirit of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But if anybody has any questions after this session, um, the video will be recorded, obviously. If you do not want that, please let Alice know. Um, also, if you've got any other questions, just go to the website of, uh, of Luxury Hospitality and we are happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, for now, enjoy the show and uh, see you on the next time, I guess. And thanks, thanks for watching. Thank Hello. you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers, Cheers everyone. everyone. <laughs> Emma, sorry, what did you say? Yeah, I was wondering who is the winner, because uh, I'm not the ah. winner, so the second one, who is the winner? Come on, this is the moment. Well, if, Be if Bex is not the winner either, then it's in third place we had Iina, I'm probably not pronouncing it wrongly, really, but um, uh, Bex is not her. Iina. <laughs> <laughs> So if, if people still feel like um, like staying on the chat, that's fine. We'll, we'll be yeah, open of course, they, everyone feel, should feel welcome to stay. Yeah, if you got questions, other people are in the chat, please, please feel free to do so. I'll be here. But your official part is done. Mm -hmm. I still have my whole drink, so uh, that's good. You, you can just have a virtual party. I might we have to finish our drinks the virtual here, party, like but yeah. you can yeah. have a virtual this party. This is the ideal time for... for the cocktail in a yacht. It, it depends on the definition of cocktail, right? <laughs> some people like uh, non-alcoholic, non some people class. like punch or whatever, but I don't know. <laughs> depends on the night before, I guess. <laughs> because when you're having a productive day, uh, you shouldn't be drinking in the morning, but when you have a very productive day and a very heavy evening, you might want to wake up with the Bloody Mary. So there is no time uh, today that's best for, for a cocktail. No, not really. And that's the cool thing about it. If you do it um, small, don't over, over drink, obviously. Um, the cool thing is, what trains up these days is that people like to go low calorie, low alcohol, and even non alcoholic. But this is the trend that you see popping everywhere. So um, there is a, a lot of cocktail programs um, specifically for these requests from the guests. So every day, every time of the day, every minute, every second, you can create something uh, for anybody. So. Um, sorry, I just saw a question from Bex asking, Rob, what's your favorite cocktail? Ooh. What's my favorite cocktail? Well, in general, just give me a glass of beer and I'm happy. <laughs> um, or a nice glass of wine. But I do prefer, when we're talking cocktails, I really prefer um, the Hawaiian Polynesian influenced drinks which have been created in uh, Hollywood after Prohibition in America. And I'm talking about tiki cocktails, which is mad about uh, how you stage it. I got a I got a large tattoo of a tiki on my arm. I'm totally I went to Hawaii to do research for these drinks categories. Um, for me, it's about fun. It's about rum. Uh, it's about uh, creating multi complex uh, flavors and flavor profiles within these drinks. And it's all about getting guests back to you 
and make creating conversation piece cocktails, right? A cocktail is just a, a card in a deck of cards that we can use to create memorable guest experiences. Uh, so a cocktail is really helpful for that. And I think tiki cocktails, any, even a glass of wine, uh, it's all about the guests and how you deliver it to the guests. So to make things special, my, one of my uh, magic weapons, a weapon of choice, tiki cocktails. And then think of the Mai Tai, think of the zombie, think of the folk culture, missionary's downfall. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> loads of drinks that I can uh, highly recommend. But uh, what's your favorite drink, Bex? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, can I ask you, you teach, you can teach like individuals or you can take, teach courses and as well online for, for a group of people, right? In, in mixology and how to make different drinks. Yeah, we always prefer to train in person, but yeah. obviously because of these challenging times, we uh, created a uh, very cool approach to online bar training on the website. Again, there's more on that. But how do we do that? Obviously, I can't be there in person. I can't taste the drink and give uh, feedback. Uh -huh. So uh, I created a system um, that uh, needs a little bit of education. I've created tasting sheet forms and uh, a system that is what we call the buddy system that we buddy up two persons on the other end of the camera and you have one judge and one bartender and they're going to do role play as well and switch roles. And in this case, by just using the logic, the, the logic way of how a human body tastes with the five senses, etc. Uh, then we can really um, give each other good feedback on the taste of the cocktail. Uh, but for the rest, speed, creativity, uh, hygiene, safety, all these things I can manage uh, throughout um, um, uh, with, with Zoom. We have pre-recorded loads of videos that uh, we, I went to a bar, showed all the materials, all the way how they could work, speed, uh, fast and efficient. So it's... Uh, it's a, a, a blended approach, a blended learning approach between videos, me being there all the time, giving homework uh, and uh, body systems that people can uh, challenge each other, which is super cool because um, especially when there's not a lot to do, it's a very motivating way of getting crew involved, uh, get them, uh, the, their, their creativity flowing. So um, yes, so either onshore or on board and uh, online these days as well. We gotta move with the time. So, so is yeah. everything that you do like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, luxury or you know, say, a Canadian like me who grew up in a logging yard, that you could teach me how to make cocktails. It doesn't have to be, you know, for for people that are coming in on a regular basis or you're you're entertaining. It doesn't have to be ultra ultra high luxury. Well, first of all, we should define the word luxury, uh, and for me. If, if I define the word luxury, it doesn't have to do with a, a 750,000 euro bottle of vodka. Uh, it has to do by creating these memorable guest experiences and showing that in an effortless way. So if you're effortless and if you are very confident in what you are doing, then you can make the guest feel like they're being treated seven star service. And so when this technique is, is in the mind and you don't need to think about, damn it, how do I pour this glass of wine or how do I get the drink as possible to the guest? When this is in your system, either by training or self-study or whatever, then you get time in your head to think of the, the next step, which is really putting your own personal identity in your service. Uh, so if it's only on luxury, no. First, we, trigger, we, we cover all the basics. And then we, um, 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 yeah, we try to get all the creative juices flowing. Nice. Well, you know what? This has been absolutely amazing, and I've really enjoyed it. And I've especially, after a very long week, I've especially enjoyed my gin and tonic and my and espresso martini. They were absolutely <laughs> amazing. And thank you for teaching it to us. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, this has been great. Uh, I hope that you all learned something. And, of course, we're going to make sure that you have all the information in order to get a hold of Rob. Thank you to Soft Interiors for sponsoring and Luxury Hospitality Management, of course, number 12, wine, fine wines and provisions. Um, and hey, you know what? Tomorrow's a brand new day. We've got a whole pile of things going on again tomorrow right here at the Balearic Yacht Show. So please do join us. Thank you, Rob, and have a great Thank night. You. And cheers, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.